first. It's not even like they kind of wait for it to see what yep. comes out. They know they need to get it out of there. Yeah, that was not even thought about. It's kind of <laughs> it's kind of unfortunate, but if we think of the way the complexity tried to play against To Be Determined, where the more exotic champions, they just ban out because they don't want to deal with it. Because we have to remember, Complexity has spent the majority of this practice playing against LCS teams. And generally, the right. LCS teams aren't playing Lulu mid. So even if they could have developed a counter for it, it was much easier for them to just plan a ban around it and then prepare for more standard things. We'll see what they've prepared for the day. The bans are always something that you can solidify when they're on the board. But the picks are something you have to get first. And it's going to be Elise coming in for complexity. We know that Loud Mortis likes to focus on a lot of tanky junglers, but towards the end of the split, when they were in the NASAS, he was starting to switch it up a little bit to more of the aggressive, more of the, more of the gankers. Yeah, they're messing with us with that Fiora pick as well. But to talk about the, the Elise and a little bit of the pick ban retrospective here right, right. now. It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. The Elise pick could very well be Loud Mortis. He didn't play it in either of the matches yesterday. All right. We'll let him carry champions. All right. Like, oh, we'll I go guess. for this one. <laughs> uh, but really, the Zac ban is really smart by complexity because iDream played that in both games that they were able to win back on the first day of Fear Packs. Zac has been a formidable challenging opponent for a lot of these teams. If he is let through, you at least have that initiation once you get towards the late game. Kind of mm -hmm. fearless since you can bounce right out of it. But it is going to be Thresh Jarvan that we see coming in. Jarvan not getting that much play time this weekend as opposed to the other junglers as we see in Lee's. We actually haven't seen Zach go into the jungle no, throughout this weekend. He is now in the top now. lane. He just loves the top lane. We got enough junglers and he's just shown so much super tank effectiveness almost when we're coming into late game that there's no reason to go away from that. And specifically, that Jarvan Thresh pick by Cognitive of Complexity is deciding their stuff. They definitely decided to go for that rumble. But yeah. this means for Cognitive, they have the ability to focus ganks very hard on their bottom lane because nothing here and Valkyrie really like to get rolling and nothing ganks better than Thresh support supporting a jungler who also has a gap close. We saw Crumbs do it quite well on Dig when they went up against Curse, kind of got in and out on Cop if you guys remember the replay. We'll see if Cognitive Gaming can kind of produce the same effect with the composition that they have. Seeing the Annie on complexity side, I almost thought they were going to pull out the Shen again and start doing Annie Flash Taunt Tibber Shen in well, engagements that's what like wanted. they did. Yeah, exactly. But Probably not this time. They do lock in the rumble. And they're going to go for uh, really not nothing. Here's Caitlyn, but one of those champions he did play yesterday and did exceptionally well on in engagements. Yeah. It's a good pick away from nothing here. I mean, complexity is preparing, I think, fairly heavily off of the games they saw two days ago mm -hmm. that Cognitive was playing, making sure they just did keep Caitlyn out of nothing here's hands because he was so effective on it. And it shows in the pick ban strategy as well. And then when we look across the Cognitive there, trying to mix it up a little bit, they'll have the potential submarine move yep. if Twitch comes in stealth while Shen is flying in on Stand United. But that's just another thing that Cognitive is building around nothing here and trying to protect him as an AD carry. We're looking for a mid laner here. They leave a lot to go on Zamfira, especially for this one. Knowing of his skill, knowing of that mechanic set, we're going to allow him to round out the bands as complexity. He has 17 seconds here mm -hmm. to figure out what they're going to do for support. MIA, one of those supports that does go with quite a variety. He dips into the Alistar, he dips into the Fiddlesticks, he dips he into a lot the of Blitzcrank. Stuff. He's also played like... Dips into the Zyra. Fiddlesticks and things, but yeah, the yeah. Zyra would be strong if they can lock it down with the Equalizer, and I think that's why they're going with that pick, because they need enough stuff to keep people in Prawley's Equalizer. If anything, Complexity is a little overloaded on magic damage right here, so it's going to put a pretty big emphasis on Cheaper's farm, which is something he didn't have to do yesterday. Ooh, choosing to go for that Karthus versus yeah. an Orianna. Not the easiest matchup for a Karthus, but we'll see how Zamfira takes to this. The composition yeah. of trying to zone everybody onto that equalizer is really what complexity has put together here. Just suck everybody into that vacuum. Exactly. And Zamfira with that Karthus pick, he did pick it against NWE. He went 7-3-6 and six with yeah, it, so it was a fairly good game. It was really him and nothing here that got the majority of the kills to get them here when they were playing against NWE. But as you said, that complexity composition is a fair bit about team fighting. It'll be interesting to see if they try and overcommit to kills in this one, because that's always been their fallback whenever they start struggling. Yep. And they need to keep forward that objective-facing game 
even though they're going to be drawn into getting just team fights, and they got to distract themselves with objectives almost. When I was talking to Prowley yesterday in the interview after their matchup, he was saying that was one of the main focuses, mm -hmm. and we had to call ourselves out on it, he said. He, during the game, we started to falter, and we said, we're going back to our old ways. We need to yeah. stop. And be able to change that pace when you're kind of gunning in, your head's getting a little bigger because you have the kills, is really, really amazing to be able to do. Yeah, and I mean, Complexity and their whole organization, just want to say here, they've been, they've been such a boon to the challenger scene, I got to say, because yes, they were in the LCS. They mm -hmm. know what it was like to be there, so they know what it will be like if they can get back. And they've really embraced this. You know, the organization as well has kept the team completely together. Yep. It's continued to support them, and they really, you know, that's why they say they want it so much, because they were there, and they've been working this entire split to try and make it back. And, and all that work with the mentality they still have, the fun they put out, the comical mm -hmm. experience you get, just being around them, talking to the team, is amazing. But right now, we also have Cognitive Gaming. Team coming up from the NCS, trying to make it happen for themselves. This complexity looks to get back in as well. We are in now to the Challenger Series Finals. Absolutely there. Wonder if we're going to see some early warding by Cognitive to try and find where Complexity's lane is. They put so much emphasis on nothing here in Valkyrie going strong. They want to get the right lane matchup. Whether that's a 1v2 or 2v1 for them, it's very difficult to 2v2 against Caitlyn Zyra. So there's actually a good chance Cognitive is going to want to find a 2v1. So they actually want to be able to get a ward in behind double golems, which isn't something Complexity is necessarily stopping them from going for right now. Playing a quick game of hide and seek. Mm. Looks like MIA is trying to throw down some plants. And that one will be a ward, I believe. So they got safety in a few of the brushes for the engage. But it looks like it's going to be the late one for the red. Yeah, this could get a little bit interesting. They're going to step on. No, they're walking around the Caitlyn. No, they oh, didn't. He's got clown shoes on. Yeah. There was a trap on that brush. But they're still going for that ward. Because the big reason they're invading this is they want to get at least a little bit of vision of where Complexity's lane is. They wore just the lane itself, so they know exactly <laughs> where Complexity's gonna be, but this doesn't actually tell them where the lanes are starting. I he dream, you love those cupcakes. Cakes. They are delicious. Never knew. They, yeah, they are. Yeah. Never some. We throw them out in the crowd. Yeah, so they're they not gonna do warning. anything with this. They're like, yeah, few too many traps. He's feeling full. They don't want any more engagement off of this one. And it looks like with that ward in the bottom lane, it's going to be hesitant for Trooper and MIA to where they want to go here. Did you see that, though? As soon as MIA walked over the ward, Cognitive pinged him and they said, hey, guys, he's bottom lane. And they thought that he was going to stay there. But then at the same time, MIA is running all the way up top lane because they know the game that Cognitive is playing. And they're actually, it's a double mind game, actually. The yep. Twitch is running all the way back <laughs> up top because they, they recognized that Lauda Mortis wasn't getting a pull on red buff. So Cognitive was able to put two and two together and know that Chooper and MIA were running top. So lane mind games in the start, and I have to say Complexity actually came out on top. Chooper trying to come in and get some damage down. They get that wave pushed, but a good run by nothing here. Allows them to get back before it hits the turret, so those two will be able to pretty much even out in this lane. As we start off, the even lanes means the slow turrets, means a bit of a slow start here for the teams, but we'll have to see. They may be able to change that with the first gank. I wonder how aggressive Lata Mortis is going to be on this Elise. Because he's had, you know, he's the type who has been playing the Amumu and the Nasus, but he still plays extremely aggressively. I remember when Lata Mortis was really making his way into the competitive scene. He was doing jungle Alistair and jungle Maokai. He was just a full gank all the time. And now he's trying to focus a bit more on the objective focused junglers. Elise is a mix of the two. So I really want to see how he plays this game. Looks like they won't go anything for the top. Returning back now to the bottom. A very fast teleport back from MIA. Thought he was going back for more wards, but it seems like they've also called Trooper back to run to the bottom lane. The 2v1 matchup now. We haven't seen it too often this weekend, but we're going to see how the Challenger Series teams here react to this now. Remember, the turret armor up to eight minutes is increased. So. Mm -hmm. We'll have to see how they work I definitely with that. feel like I had the read wrong on the objectives for these teams in their dual lanes because it was actually Chuper and MIA dodging out of the 2v2 lane against nothing here in Valkyrie, and now Cognitive deciding to follow again into the 2v2 lane. There could be some side objectives because the I Dream versus Mega Zero, Shen versus Rumble matchup might also be swinging these things in the favor, but you can absolutely tell nothing here in Valkyrie want to 2v2 a lane. 
Just waiting, waiting right in the wings. Ziplock looking to secure this kill. They have enough crowd control to take down Mega Zero here, but Mega will definitely know what he needs to do to get out of the situation as well. So it's going to be tricky. He's pushing that lane quite yeah. hard for what they want. If Captain Ziplock is patient enough, the lane is going to shove past. And it's just a matter of waiting until the right moment. It's a very large oh, creep wave as well. Mega Zero is basically in range. They waited until he was now overheated. He may still have the flash to the scrap here. He puts it on the scrap and the flash. He may get out of this oh, one. Oh, no. They go for the next hit and the Q. But it's Zephyr in mid. He goes down. Probably's in a double turret dive, and he also gets hit up. Wow. Two so for one. That was a very patient gank by Cognitive and an unexpected gank by Lauda Mortis. As a mid laner, you don't expect it to get dove behind your turret for that very reason. The double turrets will start hitting you. There's not very much speed. And Prawley ends up giving a kill back. Good little disengage there. Valkyrie taking quite a bit of damage as there are two offensive spells, or one offensive, one complexity uses that to their advantage. Small mm -hmm. trades. It's going to give everybody a bit of an upper hand, but they know they're still pretty much even in this game right now. Nothing here in Valkyrie. Push back to the turret. We got to remember, nothing here really got his kills, his plays, and all of those wows from being able to mechanically dodge engages at turrets, get double kills from getting himself to safety. So he really yeah. shines in those tight fights, in those tight spots. Yeah, it's kind of interesting how he got extremely farmed in game two because the team was repetitively tower diving him. <laughs> and it's, it's nice that he was able to turn it around, but you also have to question how was he in the situations where the other team thought it was a good idea to do that multiple times and that means there's got to be a couple flaws in his laning play he's just able to make make plays in the clutch so to speak after that first gank top we really haven't seen any aggression coming out from Autumn Mortis here we did see that middle gank that was pretty much a counter to what happened top and so far they're regrouping trying to get items spirit stones for both junglers and a lot of wards coming out very early here everybody's picking one up on any back yeah, I mean, they know that the only kill on Complexity is on Lodomortis. So he's... Lodomortis is potentially the strongest person on Complexity right now. And if Cognitive just puts a little extra warding down, yeah. they can kind of prevent that. And all the lane things that happened earlier, Zamfira or Zamfira actually got the kill back, which puts him at a bit of an edge over Prowl. Another swap coming in. I dream to find the headshots of Trooper once again, but that's 6 to level 4 here. If there were a there's a gank in this lane. That's going to be pretty hefty damage coming from COG. But here's that objective game the Complexity was talking about. They do the lane swaps, they predicted the Cognitive would follow, and they just went straight for the Dragon. There's actually Cognitive trying to set up another Jarvan gank in the top lane, and have to see if he's stood on, stood on a ward. And Lauda Mortis... He's actually not, yeah. So they just picked up a smart Dragon. Picked up the Dorans on Elise for a little bit of this, too. Yeah, he actually started the game with the Dorans. Yeah because he wanted that for the early mm -hmm. turret dive, which he was somewhat successful with. Now he's going back to the Spirit Stone. That was just him actually saving on health potions for the most part. Six is in mid. Yes, Zamfira is as well, so we're going to have to watch for that Requiem window being up since he has not used it yet. We'll have to see if it's an engagement in the top lane. Usually you'll see a hard engage by the AD carries around mm. their six, and then they back off like they weren't going to get the kill in. Bam, Karthus does not have to move. So eyes out for that from Cognitive Gaming here. And Complexity yeah. has to have that on their mind as well. Yeah, Captain Ziploc has been looking for that blue buff for quite some time. It just now spawned up. He's been, he's been prancing back and forth for a little while, <laughs> trying to steal this blue buff from Lada Mortis and potentially setting up a gank in the bottom lane. But his main objective here is just stealing blue. Looks like he got it. Crushes it away. The ward's there. So even sees Lada Mortis coming on the backside, which alerts the top lane where I believe Lauda Mortis, no, he decides not to go. He was heading there for a second. So eight minutes into this one, not many kills on the board since the lane's being swapped so much. It's interesting to watch how the teams are adapting and like you said, how Complexity actually tricked them into just taking that dragon away. Yeah, Complexity also lane swaps a lot more than Cognitive. One of the strengths of Complexity for their team is just lane rotations in general. And that's how, as I was talking to these guys, how they actually beat Cognitive back when they played before was just lane swapping like crazy and confusing Cognitive, catching Cognitive in rotations. All right. Blue stole back. <laughs> it goes to Lauda Mortis. There was an auto attack from Prowley, but it's all right. I mean, wanted it anyway. Yeah. The other jungler had a blue. Lauda Mortis wanted to keep pace with them. <laughs> That's what I would have done. It's a man. 11-3 to 11-7, that 400 gold in favor of Complexity here, that dragon helping out just a tad. 
We're gonna look at the CS, 65 to 55 in favor of Shen, the bottom lane. So the lane's almost even, but just a little bit winning in the favor of Cog, which is helping to keep that gold close for now. Yeah, look at these turrets going down too. Lot of Mortis and Mega Zero really pressuring iDream. iDream doesn't feel safe with this turret right now because we know how strong Lot of Mortis is gonna be at level six with those double buffs plus an equalizer. Could pretty much just kill him. And they're very close to getting that turret down. Taunt comes in as Jarvan's approaching. Oh, <laughs> saves the turret near 200 HP. Ziploc just on the back side, and they will be able... No, not to get out of this one. He goes to the Cataclysm, flash in. But that Whoa. means he's sitting on the Equalizer. The Requiem comes down. This is the window they were looking for. But Mega may be able to pick up this kill. He wants those double buffs. he will get himself the double buff transfer. What a huge turn there for Complexity. He's got a fist pound from Lotta Mortis. <laughs> Absolutely. That's a, that's a worth double kill and double buffs for Mega Zero's Rumble, which was banned away every game they played yesterday against To Be Determined for a reason. And then he can go and get the turret. You could really say Cognitive was forcing that one there because the only reason they engaged is they overestimated the damage that the Karthus ultimate was going to land to their 2v2. But cataclysming double melee against a rumble means you will be sitting on top of that equalizer. And it just Whoa. did not work out. Oh, going to be on the trap. He puts himself in a bad spot. That's the turret range. He is going to get hit with another turret shot. He is going to go down. Valkyrie puts himself in his own death sentence. Absolutely, Rip. That's another worth for complexity. Cognitive trying to use their globals to make their lane swing, but they give up a one-for-one one in a 3v2 gank. Just not worth it. Automortis to the top here, giving out a little bit of help as MIA has gone down in the, the previous situation, so they're trying to play these ones smart. A very good kind of advantage they've grabbed here. Getting that dragon, now spreading a 2,000 gold lead in a matter of minutes at 11 minutes. Yeah, this is looking good for Complexity, and now they're going to want to put more pressure down onto the objectives because they have swung the lanes a little bit by winning those undermanned exchanges. They had to deal a 2v2 against a Karthus ultimate and came up on top. Then they 2v3'd against a Shen ultimate and came in on top. They're looking strong right now. Frawley can escape. Great play for Frawley. That oh. shield's not going to come back up in enough time. Great assurance on the kill coming in from Cod. And I wonder how Frawley's Orianna is going to transition through the rest of this game because he's generally been a player who plays a lot of unconventional things and Orion is a very conventional matchup especially against oh Zan, look out Captain Ziploc oh, oh one to the right one to the left I think Mega None thought he's through. like wait this could this okay I'll try it and then kind of he mind gained himself yeah exactly <laughs> he's like this guy's not gonna move it. Oh, he is going to move. All right. But being able to put this kind of pressure on, 12 minutes in, you shouldn't be able to be sitting in between the two turrets. Their top lane now to the mid lane to start covering. As you can see, they're frantically pressuring this top to try to get the turret down. But it's going to be Prowley and Trooper going up to that lane. So if Trooper pulls this one in, Prowley could change the fight. Yeah, they're definitely trying to stop this one. I mean, Prowley's going to go in. And it looks it like Falcon's thinking about a dive. As soon as they get aggro, here comes Prowley. Oh, no! See you later. Prowley just walking up from the back side, says, hello, welcome to the party, and it's going to be nothing here. The ball movement, now that it's on Prowley, is going to be a guess little where he bit is. better. Running forward, slowed down by the flask, and nothing here gets out alive. Well played again in the mind games by Complexity. So it's the rotations, once again, by Complexity that have been a little bit stronger then Cognitives. They then rotate probably top lane because they recognize it would be unexpected by Cognitive. And now the question is, can they get down bottom fast enough to support this dragon? Troopers overstayed a little bit long here, trying to get a turret as well. I think by now, Ooh, Cognitive in that mindset of, no, they can't be doing that again. Nobody's behind them. But it is every time. Complexity staying consistent with that strategy. And they are getting mounds of an advantage with it. Five to five is a score, but that gold lead... Almost near 2,000 still. Trooper should be able to get out of this one. Yeah, surprisingly, Trooper's the same level as the solo lane Shen, which goes to show That's how much different. iDream has actually That's been very shut different. down right now. And this is an extremely dangerous dragon for Cognitive to be trying. Even though they have the Shen ultimate, they're putting themselves in a pit against Mega Zero's Rumble, who's already 2 and one with multiple magic penetration items. He has finished those sword boots. Too. 
Haunting guys, the minions coming up big onto that one, but Mega Zero gets himself into a sticky situation here. The backside is his friends, and this is exactly what he wanted. The double man shockwave, the third on the strangle thorn. Now the pop-up is iDream comes in with the shield and stand united, and they might have to back out a little bit here. Lot of Mortis is in a bad spot for a 4v1. They're coming out of the backside. It's gonna be some good oh. damage. Probably low on mana. They're gonna have to back out of this one. The positioning really hurt them there. Chooper wasn't there for that fight, and Cognitive just jumped Ooh. on them. They're trying to Requiem to catch out a low target. No dice, and it's still a 4v4 with this dragon. It's getting a little bit low, but there's no smite contest. They so I don't a, think Complexity's going. A little dangerous here. They don't have a long-range grab or any of that hard car control that's going to keep him there, unless Shen. No, his flash is almost up, but he's not in range. So Complexity playing it to the last drop of what they could try to pressure, but they do lose the dragon, mm. and that is a good close on the deficit in gold for, for Cog. Absolutely. Being able to get the dragon back while being down one in turrets means a lot of benefit for them. Swinging back three kills on Zephyr, two kills on nothing here. Those are the people that Cognitive Gaming want kills on if they're going to be trying to take on this complexity team. So we look what is going into the inventories here as Lauda Mortis does what he can. Don't see really anybody on the back side except for two. There's going to be against five here. They choose to kind of waltz it away. We can see the consideration now being put onto nothing here. Three pink wards sitting in the hands of Complexity for this next engagement. Wherever it may be, the turrets are falling fast and Complexity is yet to lose anything but the top one. But here comes Complexity going for kills. Oh, man, Shockwave under the spider. Not doing too much damage there because it was Loud of Mortises. So it was a very nice flash coming out. The blue is taken. Whoa. These guys. Oh, he's dead. Complexity <laughs> is going on things that they know. To us right now, it looks a little bit like they're going in the tunnel. But they are so powerful. We saw those kills going on to Mega Zero. They are handling what they can do perfectly. Yeah, that was a choice right there of Complexity to just go in because they had cooldowns but they can get objectives out of it anyway. By forcing Cognitive out of the blue buff, they're also allowing Trooper more time to push in that top lane, and then making their own push go as well. So they're actually looking for a blue buff objective there. They just happened to find a Valken with an Oracles, which they were able to take out. Another complexity took into consideration about, you know, really trying to fight or stop or dive nothing here. He does have two kills because of hit their ability to roam, what's happened in the adapting and the fighting, but they have not gone after him to give him those kills. He got them because he was pressured. So they're trying to stay as far away right now as they can. And the kills are going on to Zamfira. So with the Rod of Ages coming out, it's not going to be mm -hmm. huge bursts of damage. It's going to be a lot of utility for the team. Yeah, right now, right. Zamfira is going to be looking still to farm up. He's actually not farming at an amazing Karthus clip. 115 CS at 17 minutes is not necessarily a huge mm -hmm. amount of Karthus farm. If we had to just think about who has the team fight edge right now, though, I'd say it would be complexity if they can MIA with Mega Zero. So it's very, there's a lot of pressure on Mega Zero and MIA to get these things right. But as you can see, just the overall strategy of the game, Cognitive is giving a lot of ground to complexity, which is why we can see Wraith steals like that. Pretty good wave push here, clearing up the, looks like top wave is going to be for Mega Zero. So he will not be in too many engagements, but it looks like they're also sending power in numbers of two for complexity here. Or it's just Trooper playing a little scary. He's walking by himself through the river. They know that's going to be an attack on mid turret. These guys well, are they want back him. and forth right now. Shockwave. Trying to figure out where the kill could come from. Valkyrie again, still quite low. Taking a lot of damage on his side. It's going to be Zamfira taking it again. The Lantern to save. And Complexity is a little too not focused on one person here. Ziploc taking damage. Dream is taking damage. Mega Zero! Everybody's health is low. Mega could be what they needed. Will he be able to scrap shield into range? The Ace in the Hole does hit. There are so many health bars. Maybe a full health bar altogether. I Dream through and he goes, but he goes down in the end to the hands of Mega. Mega could clean this up, but he also could go down for the shutdown to nothing here. That is the good gold that he needed. And this is just incredibly back and oh forth. Dear. Mega Zero took the long run down to that fight and nearly cleaned up. But we look at what actually happened. We're at nine kills to nine. The gold is still a thousand away, and nothing here got yet another kill. So one other thing in this fight. Imagine if Mega Zero was here right now because they got everything comboed in. Strangle Thorns and Shockwave kept them knocked up, but there was no equalizer that they were standing on right here. And it actually ended up taking down Lata Mortis to the Ignite of Shen. 
Then there was a re-engage by Cognitive, but that's when Mega Zero came in and he wanted to cut Cognitive off with this one. But because there was nothing locking them down, Cognitive could just run right back out. Nice faint timing by Shen to block that one. And then Mega Zero just goes all in to stop them. But it was a nice counter turn by the bottom lane duo of Nothing here and Valkyrie, who did everything in their power to shut down and stop Mega Zero from getting in for more kills. Nothing here sitting on a good amount of gold right now. He does have those three items ready to piece together the Infinity Edge, which is just about ready. Actually, is ready, but he's choosing to push this wave a little past River. He can go back safely, and they can force his mid lane now. It is still is that one turret down for complexity, and that's the top one. We see that being pushed out by iDream. His stand United is up, so the engagement still possible to come in, but they may wait for that Requiem. If they can wait for the Requiem, they definitely want to. Right. Because they know how close these team fights are. And they also recognize the last one was a little bit of a 4v5 for them, where they still ended up only getting two for one. So they have to be quite careful. And I think they want iDream to get a couple more items as well. He's sitting on a lot of Shen Gold right now, about 1,350. He will want the Sunfire Cave to go with Fierce Spirit Visage so he can really just run at Trooper and not worry about the magic damage that's hitting them elsewhere. We're trying to flip side on the bottom as well. Mega Zero doing the same thing right now. You can see those top lanes matching up. Mega Zero has 700 more gold than I Dream, but they maybe won't be meeting each other anytime soon with the split push going on. Right now, I Dream going back. They see that. Mega Zero could catch Valkyrie here. It looks like everybody's getting a little split. Complexity is starting to move for the engagement, but it's Cog that's moving to disengage. And they're just waiting a couple more seconds for that Requiem to come up. He's only got 14 seconds left. And here's that blue buff invade that we saw Complexity pick up a couple kills off earlier. They really want to go and harass this, but the blue buff's just going down too quick. Getting a little bit on that. Able to force the smite would have been quite nice, but I don't think he would have used it anyways. They would have given that up to see what they can do here. And this is the spot where Complexity would want to fight if Cognitive comes in on them. Oh, here there it is! Shen Tog's in! Mega Zero's around the back, though. Ooh. That was pretty creepy. They do have a ward on the bottom side to see Mega Zero, so they all take a deep breath, realize what the situation is, and back out safely. Yeah, everybody calm down. But Complexity is <laughs> not wanting to calm down. They're wanting to keep the tempo pressed. They're going for this mid turret because they know the Cognitive has to take a long rotation down to avoid the fight. You can see Gator Mortis on your screen there, trying to help the team, getting shots down onto the turret. He's getting himself in some pretty crazy situations, but with that repel, with the, you know, the Jarvan flag tosses kind of baits we've seen this weekend, the junglers have been doing quite big things for their teams. And they're just living in Cognitive's side of the jungle. Eventually, Cognitive's going to fight him back. If Whoa. Twitch gets a good spraying prey off and Karthus dies in a good spot, Cognitive would win these fights, whereas Complexity has even more tools to try to turn this around. This type of tight corridor is an extremely oh, explosive fight. you mean that tight corridor? Zamfira sitting right on the equalizer. Valkyrie flashes on the equalizer, but that's to get in range and pull himself over the wall. Actually, quite a nice play to get the ulti in. It looks like they are going to continue this fight. Cog has very good damage going down. Somehow they dodged all of that air of effect damage in a tight area and are able to come out with this fight on top. Trooper's trying to duel nothing here off on the side, but he is not coming out on top. Oh! Yikes. That was an expunge. And let's take a look at why this fight went the way it did. Nothing was really locked down on the Equalizer, even though they killed Zamfira, and probably died right as his shockwave was going off. So you saw the circle start, but it never hit. And at that point, since the Requiem hit, and they were barely in range for some of that defile. Cognitive was just able to chase down. Nothing got on nothing here, and he was able to just fight off. Once the stun landed, Trooper thought he could have a go at him, but he could not duel the Twitch. Nothing here flashed in, even took a turret, almost took a turret shot to get the ace. Well, they indeed took those turrets. They took two off of those kills. And as you watch that fight, not to call Valkyrie out, he actually kind of, you know, fast-fingered his ultimate before he flashed and went over the wall. But to win that fight still without that ultimate means Cog is easily starting to ramp up now. Yeah, just look at the 406 Twitch right now. Vamp Scepter already, plus the Zeal, a little bit ahead of Chooper, and it's mainly... Ah, uh, Baron's pissed off now. Mainly that Spray and Prey <laughs> that was able to rip through the tight corridors of that complexity fight. Really, if Complexity's not going to line up that Equalizer with a Stranglethorns or a Shockwave, they're not going to be winning these fights because they're getting them in the tight spots. They're just not necessarily layering to get, it, to get it like they want. Yeah. Again, oh. the engagement down the corridor. 
of Cog's jungle on that red side. Valkyrie walking right out of that, but you can just see the equalizer alone taking him to half. Yeah. That was a big waste, though, for them. But if Cog can get a fight right now, they're absolutely going to do it. The things they're worried about are the Shockwave and the Equalizer, so flashes up on iDream. He's going to look to catch someone. Oh, he gets the flash taunt. MIA is able to get out of that one. The grasping roots backwards would be all. acceptable one right more. now. He gets another taunt, staying in range. He's going to have to throw on the ult. He keeps it actually for the team, and they should be able to get out. So he holds most of his summoners. Oh, actually most of his things, not his ultimate. He blows his summoners. And... There's still a potential for Cognitive to re-engage this one. Because Shockwave and Equalizer are still down. And th that was a little bit of what we're talking about, the old complexity, the complexity is trying to move away from, where they used both of those ultimates for kills and then didn't have them up for the objective fights. There's the Repel. He does have walls, but Dream I Dream is giving them vision to where pretty much everyone is here. They're safely moving through, knowing that Rumble Alti is down. They can walk through, not even wearing hard hats on this one. Cog is definitely trying to pressure back onto complexity. They know they have the upper hand now. They do have to recognize that they've had, they've been chasing for a while. Yeah. And Prawley's shockwave is actually back up right now. So everyone of Cognitive is just going to say, all right, guys, good job. We chased down, got MIA, but we should get out of here because they were pretty low on mana and they burned a fair chunk of cooldown. So they need to reshop in case there's a Baron objective for soon. Mega Zero needed to clear the bottom wave as well because he knew that Cognit was going back to base. And I think these guys are going to kind of reset for another big team fight fairly shortly. Despite having a Shen, we haven't seen a huge amount of split pushing in this game. Five, zero, and six coming in for nothing here. Somehow he finds a way to get those kills in his pocket. Hardly ever dying, but being in the engagements. Participating in 11 of the 15 kills on his team right now. Yeah, that is quite impressive. I mean, him, Jarvan, and Karthus have all been extremely involved. Captain Ziploc from the very start with those Jarvan ganks that he was able to get, even up top, got the first kill of the yeah. game there. He's been very impactful. And he's also going for that aura right now. Aegis of the Legion, probably Locket of the Iron Solari, will be the upgrade. Giving his team a little bit of extra power to not get blown up by Shockwave and Equalizer. Since the team fights are also close and the auras are able to hit everyone. That shockwave is being considered. I wonder if that Aegis will actually go into the locket. Would have maybe expected to see one without an Elise for the Karthus, but they're actually just going to go for a straight build of damage coming out on a lot of Mortis after mm -hmm. that Golden Spear. It goes for the Pen Boots along with Rumble in the top lane, so they're very AP heavy that we haven't really mentioned coming into this composition. Yeah, and I mean, the build for a lot of Mortis on Elise is hard to pass up. Elise has so much base damage yeah. that Magic Pen really just blows people up. We really need to focus on this next Baron, though, because Cognitive has actually kind of retaken some of the ground, and they're starting to poke around Baron, looking for fight. Holy Whoa, crap. Whoa! Trooper just got exploded. MIA dodging that one out for a quick second, and that is not what they expected. Something has to be contested here, whether they dance it out or whether they actually get it. And here's the hardest part for complexity. They have all magic damage when Trooper is down. We know that Trooper generally is a good AD carry if he doesn't have to carry the whole game. This is tr troubling right now. 4v5 at Dragon. Jarvan Ultimate is up. Captain Ziploc wants to find something. There's a pretty good grasping route. MIA will be the one to go down again here. The team should pretty much let this happen. They should be backing out right now. A lot of more is taking a few shots. I don't think the slow is going to stick enough for iDream to catch him. And he does get himself away. Trooper is up, but he's still a long ways away from that Baron buff. And the Equalizer is down for Mega Zero. This is still a contentious Baron for Cognitive. I wonder if they're going to keep trying to find kills or if they're actually going to force this Baron objective. Pink Ward going down right in the middle, but Cog has already thought that one through, Ooh. making sure that nothing here has easy entrance and escape into the fight. Looks like they well, slow they things away. down to really feel out where each other are right now. Cog, they're pretty much playing cat and mouse on the other side of the wall. They know Ooh. they're there, and they're taunting them into this dragon. Yeah, and this could be a 5v4. There is no MIA here right now. Equalizer is still down, but Cognitive has no strong initiation. They're a little low. Here's a big fight. Going on a Ziploc. He could be going down on this. They did secure the dragon, so that goes to Cog. But the kills are coming in big here. Mega Zero takes him out on the backside. Ace in the hole coming in from Trooper takes down Valkyrie, and it's going to be back and forth. Only one Retribution kill coming in on for Complexity, or rather for Cog. Captain Ziploc did get the Dragon Steal amongst all that, yeah. which means the gold from that fight is actually pretty balanced out. It continues to look like cognitive gaming here. Still 2,000 gold lead. 
It was a good fight for Complexity, but if they could not win that Smite War for the Dragon, that move is not necessarily worth it, as bold as it was. Not with what has been happening for that. Just means that Cog has found the next step of these the ladder that they're pretty much getting up, and they've far surpassed complexity now. The 2,000 gold lead starts to increase for that dragon, 18 to 14, a 7 0 and 7 80 carry that we really haven't seen Cog use their comp to fruition. We've seen Jarvan ultimates come in. We haven't seen anything submarine-ish. We haven't seen Karthus flashing and trying to get into the fight or a thresh engagement. Everything has been pretty basic for them. So yeah. if they keep sticking to the basics, it's going to be pretty good. It's been solid enough. Cognitive doesn't want to go in too far where they'll all line up for the Shockwave and the Equalizer. They're kind of waiting yeah, to see where yeah. those spells get used by Complexity and then measuring their engagements. And it's working out quite well for them. It's kind of one of those situations where it more accounts that whoever uses their ultimate first will probably lose kind of thing. It depends, right? I, I'm still waiting for that moment where Complexity can get the Equalizer down in a non-avoidable spot for Cognitive because that actually hasn't happened yet. Right. And the game is still extremely close. See what is on the mind of Complexity. They don't want to go past River just yet, but they have the wards to do so. Their entire jungle is littered with wards right now, and only two or three that Cog is really putting up to that. Cognitive has the idea for Baron as well, so both of these teams mm -hmm. are kind of in danger zone in that mindset, really taking it slow. Yeah, getting up around that 30-minute mark, the game is getting very explosive. If Chupor gets caught again like he did that last time, it could actually mean the Baron. That ultimate's not going to be doing too much for him because Twitch is going to lifesteal most of that up on the next wave and Less Complexity was hoping to find a fight almost immediately. 4-3 to three in turrets. Cog found a lot of turrets after that top one went down and they really had a stall out for a few minutes. It's allowed them to get that increase in gold, but Complexity is not letting them get too far away with it. It seems like all of these squads just, as they move in packs and dictate where the other team is going to go, looks like they're going to push down, push down middle here. Yeah, it's like a push-pull right now. They're kind of trading mid lanes oh. without looking at each other. There's a lot of ward clear coming out from Cognitive Gaming right now, and they're definitely the ones with a slight upper hand right now because they have the positional advantage but they're definitely not feeling safe enough to take that Baron. Complexity is is very worried about a potential Baron Rush or Baron Steel because they don't know where Cognitive is and they can't see that Baron being taken right now. MA is trying to get vision. There's quite a bit of gold on Mega he Zero sees him. and on Zamfira. MIA is just on the outside. The hook goes in. They do get a lot of Mortis. Is it what they want? Oh my god, he takes him right down. He makes him the food. Chocolate miss. Goes into the fight. Stranglethorn pops up too. I Dream and Zamfir are looking to get back into the fight now as they have their movement back. Probably getting damaged. And now he's pinched between three. He gets hit up with a beautiful tent from I or taunt from I Dream right from the side of the wall. Lauda Mortis is still alive after being engaged on first, which means Cog focused on the exact people they needed to after Chupor. the initiation. Oh, Chuper, Chuper with the orb walk backwards, and he does get himself a kill. And this is a three for three where Complexity almost whiffed their ultimates. Can he get Twitch? Gets on the Frenzy, gets on the Q. He cocoons. Whoa, no mana means he needs to turn tail and head back home. So right there, we saw Complexity kind of flexing their muscles. The Shockwave missed from Prawley. As you can see, the Equalizer went down doesn't do too much, takes nothing here down, maybe about 500 Ooh. health. They did kill Valkyrie at the start of the fight, but losing your two solo laners ultimates to very little effect and then still being able Ooh. to win a fight is impressive in itself. Nothing here got flanked pretty hard here. He got a lot of Shen Shield and he did extremely well in this fight, but the rest of Complexity really just carried in a round behind him. Lauda Mortis and Trooper really stepped up in this fight making up for the missed ultimates the complexity had given up in that fight. Look at this, barely staying alive, going through the Shen Shield, then flashing back at just the right moment. I don't, he, he was actually having to click on nothing here. If he A-click, Ziploc would have taken one of those shots. So at some point he switched from his A-clicks back to having to yeah, a lot exactly, of quick clicking back and forth. exactly click on Twitch. Here's another fight though. This is almost a repeat. Oh, they get him Sam an equalizer. Fira is hatching that equalizer right now. Loud Amortis goes in. Baron's going to be doing a bit of damage here, but it's Trooper that picks it up with a smite shot. 
Ziploc trying to make that seal look good, and he cannot get the secure. He goes down himself. Complexity coming out huge, but wait a minute. That was a big turn. Daydream coming up big with nothing here on that kill. Nothing here, and iDream still alive. MIA and probably the other side. They have Baron, which means the regen is there, but they're going to try to keep that on themselves instead of engage. What a crazy game, Riv. You could see Trooper headshot at the Baron and basically out damage Spite, which is why neither of those junglers have used their smite because he got spiked down randomly by the Caitlyn. And then that fight itself was looking so good for complexity, but unlike the last one that they won, when they were able to just burst down nothing here at the start of the fight, nothing here came afterwards and just cleaned up for that triple kill. He's the threat oh. here, and he's hunting. Dun -dun. Dun -dun. Dun -dun. Dun -dun. Oh, Can no. he my A? He roots him. The expel. That's all. That's all she wrote. Yikes. 12 and 1 right now. Don't even need the submarine. Whew. Yeah, he's his own <laughs> submarine right now. You sunk my battleship. Now it's 25 to 21. At 35 minutes into this game, there is only a 200 gold lead with everything that's been happening. And only one turret in the favor of COG right now. It seems like we're almost just starting the game. Yeah, we've seen the team <laughs> fights. Seen the team fights go back and forth already. Complexity missed ultimates and won a team fight. Cognitive fought against a barren complexity while getting caught in the ultimates and still won. So you can see these are very swingy fights in a sense that both of these teams are extremely strong and building a huge amount of damage. Cog has generally a stronger tank line because they have the Shen and the Jarvan, but you just think Twitch Karthus. Those are two of the highest damage people you can bring in those two roles. You look around at Complexity as well, and they are building mostly offensive items across the board. Even though Light of Mortis does have some defensive itemization with a Locket of the Iron Solari now coming in, he went the Magic Pen route. Trooper has yet to build a defensive item because he's trying to keep pace damage-wise with nothing here. Hasn't been working too well, by the way, because nothing here is nearly full item build. It just goes to show the explosiveness of these fights and how undecided this game still is. And looking at Zamfir's build, he does it a little differently as well. Usually you see the Rod of Ages Seraphs embrace into, a, into the Zanyas, into the, into the Void Staff for the damage there. But he's like Rabadon's Void Staff. I don't need the Zanyas. I can go down. My team continues to fight for me. So mm -hmm. He's not worried about staying alive too long. He's just worried about getting all that damage out from Requiem to either start or end the fight. Yeah, and that Requiem is going to be hitting like a truck. Let's see right now, with 611 AP and the rank 16 Requiem, it's 800 and, no, it's 916 damage Requiem. That is hitting everyone, guaranteed. Uh, Trooper should probably pick up some Magic Resist, as well as MIA, even though he already has that, that Twin Shadows for 40 MR, only because if, if Trooper doesn't have Magic Resist, it basically means he loses every duel to nothing here. Because he's going to be starting the fight so low yep. after Zamfira's Requiem. I think Lauda Mortis heard me, but he just did it himself. He actually picks up that Locket of the Iron Solari. Super helpful to mitigate that Requiem. Mm -hmm. A little bit of the damage, so it won't be hitting full every time. Or, or so they're hoping. Or so they hope. Oh, right? so if he hits the button as well. <laughs> yeah. It's generally helpful. Looking at those scores, CS is actually pretty high, but still pretty even. 209 to 203 in the top. There's a big difference in the jungle. We know a lot of mortis likes to farm. 122 to 89 there as this top turret gets taken down near the base of complexity. 281 to 285 there. So the lanes, you know, like Com Cog said, I think we have better lanes than complexity. But as it goes, it looks like they're actually pretty even. Yeah, and this is a strange split push defense right now from Prawley. Trying to keep tabs of iDream where Cognitive is then doing the split push of their own. He's the only solo, the only person Complexity could send on the split push other than Lotta Mortis who could actually interrupt the Stand United if they go in. And this could be a 4v4 oh. Complexity tries to force. I dream trying to get out of range so he can alt in if a fight happens. Lotta Mortis has to be careful. Somebody, yeah, because I dream's move, making his way over. And it's not a back just yet from Prolly. Stand United is up. So Ooh. that engagement could have been a 5 on 4 towards that inhibitor turret. And now that Prolly's shown in this lane, it means Cognitive gets to push right back. But... I think if Complexity safe, enough. they're trying to stay back if they can't get hit by any of those hooks. Oriana, super good wave clear, and it is going to draw the attention. That means iDream just went from, from bottom to mid with really yeah. out helping the team. He didn't even push that mid wave. Not that he had the chance to, but this gives probably the advantage. He's able to take this, and there's no way he's going to be able to catch probably. Yeah, and Prawley's actually beating iDream for the most part in those duels. This is nice 
Split push movement by Complexity dealing with the Shen as long as they can handle Whoa. it here. And here comes the hard initiation from Cogna. A little stronger there. The Stand United is going off now. It goes on to Zamfira. He's right in the middle of the fight. He also gets the One down. They keep going on it. Mega Zero takes down Ziploc. He cannot crowd control for the team. Cocoon. Under the turret is going to be some damage. There is the lock of the Iron Solari. He almost took nothing as well with the command protect from Orianna. And they are going to continue this fight. A lot of Mortis looking for that cocoon to be in range. Possibly the blind into the try. And he will throw it, but it's going to be the dodge and the lantern to safety. But what happens now for Complexity? Because all five of them are available. There is a lot of damage down from Cognitive Gaming. Twitch is also low. How much can they push this advantage? Because that was an extreme overdive right there by Cognitive. And the death timers are getting longer, knowing we're only already 39 minutes into the game. Twin Shadows trying to find Twitch as well. That was quite, quite an interesting pickup on MIA. He is usually a support to go for the offensive items. Picking up that Twin Shadows, looking to get the team into range for these engagements. So much damage Top coming flash. out. I Dream goes in by himself. Nothing here is on the outside. They got him! A three-fall man shockwave. They are able to completely wipe Cog at their turret and the turret itself. After all this, they finally catch nothing here in that shockwave during that outer turret defense that is immensely dangerous. They get three more down and continue oh, to go. They say you have nowhere that is safe to stand right now. Equalizer bringing it to half. Probably clean it up with the move and dissonance. They're going to clean up this inhibitor as well. And there's a cannon minion in this wave as well. This could very well be complexity ending this game on this push. They're going to try to get into the base. They do have one Nexus turret in their eyes. They are going to try to get onto this. They take down Ziploc right away. Yellow green seal making blue for these guys. They secure the victory. Wow. They secure the Nexus. And they're going on to game two with a smile on their face. They are pumped up after that game one win. And for good reason, Riv. 40 minutes of struggle right there against Cognitive Gaming. Because Complexity was winning and losing the team fights. But they really came together right at the end. They finally got their combos. They punished Cognitive for a tower dive and then took that push all the way through to the win. Cognitive showed so strong in the beginning. They warded up to stop what Laudamortis was doing. Like Kobe says, if there's a snowball, you ward to melt that snowball. But it didn't work. They were able to continuously push through. A split push Oriana coming in in the yeah. end in that move from iDream. Bottom to middle to bottom. Yeah. Lost the turret. Allowed them to then have access to inhibitor turrets. And even after that push in mid by Cog, they took two turrets instantly, and then it's like they stalled out. It was like what we've seen in the NALCS where a team is ahead, but they don't know where to go with it. But yeah. to either of the team's you know, advantage, they were only ever ahead 2,000 gold on each other. That game was close the entire 40 minutes, and really to Prawley's credit at the end of that game, he struggled for most of it, but then he still made the moves at the end. He was out-dueling Idream, yep. and he really forced them into a very quick decision to over tower dive the complexity was ready for they were already far pulled back and then they took that to win the game very strong play we're going to send it over to freak and kobe for a breakdown of complexity's game one win yeah thank you very much Riv. here we are and that was an incredibly interesting game that was back and really forth close. the whole way yeah super close until the very end it was within 2000 gold back and forth over and over yeah and um it really started out very strong for um, Complexity there. They got the first Dragon during one of those lane swaps that Jat was talking about. Um, they just took advantage of Cognitive moving between lanes. Very easy pickup for them. Um, and they also were able to battle through Cog's global ultimates that they had in the other lanes. It was interesting too because um, those lane swaps, Cog was looking for the 2v2. Like they kept swapping back to catch yeah. Complexity, but the 1v1 and the 2v2 seemed fine. Like well, from what I saw. They got a slight CS lead there for Shen for Cognitive, so that yeah. worked out a bit. And you can see they really have a lot of faith in nothing here. So he wanted to go two versus two um, up against Chuper. All right, so as you were mentioning, the, the global competition, the Shen and the Karth is coming in and wreaking yeah. a lot of havoc. And you said the Complexity was actually able to fight through it, which is actually one of our, our first clips there, is, is Complexity battling against the globals and surviving. All right, so let's pull up the first, first clip here. This is down bottom, uh, which is a two versus two that's forced by Cog because they're thinking, hey, we've got Requiem, we have Stan United, we can go force a two versus two fight and we'll come out ahead. 
but very well played by complexity. Um, this is one of the very good equalizers that Mega Zero ended up hitting, and they turn it around. So let's roll this clip through. Here comes the flash initiate from Ziploc, and after uh, Latimoris can't get out of the Cataclysm, very good equalizer in the Cataclysm, so they kind of used it against them in the end there, and Mega Zero is able to finish it off um, with the extra magic damage there overheating at the end. That's just one of the times that they were able to battle through the Globals. Yeah, it was a really impressive fight because the jungle initiator came in from full health. I Dream is at half. Mega Zero, you know, whittled him down a little bit in that clip, but, yeah. uh, or before the clip started, I should say. But they actually melted through a full health Jarvan, which kind of impressed him. It was like, yes, this is how much damage these guys deal. If you let Latimortis and Mega go off, they'll actually melt your team. And it was kind of, that was sort of the story of the mid game was how well can complexity combo the roles together? Because the equalizers were almost they didn't never always, layered. They didn't help that much. They were almost <laughs> never layered. And I remember Jat was talking about that, where it's like, yeah, he keeps putting them out there, like they're finding the positions, but they're never putting them all in the same place. And you saw the mid game team fights go back and forth constantly. Yeah, there are a lot of uh, very close team fights, especially around Baron. And really, nothing here was coming out very much ahead in those, up to 12 kills at one point and only one death. But he couldn't pull it out in the end. Really, the downfall for Cog was that overextended tower dive that they made at the end. Definitely a slip up they don't want to make again. Yeah, and it was, it's interesting because the, I guess they can't just like wait for bad engages over and over because you can't just like wait for misplays constantly. So they actually tried to make a move, and that was actually with right, Prawley stuck there on the side. He's not going to be able to get, get to the team fight nearly as quickly as Shen. Uh, but of course, the recall made that happen. So that's actually our other clip is the overdive in the bottom lane. If you can get that on your screen real quick, uh, if you want to take us through that one, Kobe. Yeah, let's look at um, what made them decide to go for this. So they have an Orianna that's been split pushing top. So that, again, gives Cog the confidence to go for this dive because they have Shen who can immediately arrive with Stand United. But it's not quick enough for them. And the turret damage was just way too much. So let's roll this one through at full speed. And we'll see the ill-fated tower dive here. Zamfira gets caught up halfway through, and so Cog is strung out with half of their team on one side of the turret, and the other half very deep going for the, for the full dive. So that turret was getting off damage the entire fight, and Complexity are able to follow this one up because Oriana was the one split pushing, but she can recall to get back. It's not quite as fast as a Stand United, but it doesn't delay him very much. Yeah, that's what happens when you're defending in your own base for the split push, is <laughs> uh, he already actually had home guard. And he's also like 12 inches from the fountain in the first place, so it's not like he's going to be that far away. So I, don't dive when they have home guards up. Diving a home guard recall, not, not the best thing okay. in the world. Uh, and the second thing as well was actually seeing that team split up. I noticed that Lauda Mortis was on the top side. He actually had zoned out the Twitch for the most part himself. Twitch either didn't want to come down or Lauda Mortis stunned him or something. He was off screen. But you're right, the dive came through, but not everyone was there. And so it was like, oh, here's a 2v4. That's not the best for a split push. No, it's not. So we'll hope they can make some uh, alterations in their game plan because everybody wants us to go to three. If well, games not complexity. Right. Yeah, complexity would like to go to two. We'll see the, uh, the crowd certainly complexity backing for the most part. But good games are always good games. Like to see them. But that's it for us here after game one. We're going to take a short break, but game two is going to come up in the challenger finals between cognitive gaming and complexity. The LCS live from Pax Prime. We'll be right back. So stick around. <laughs> 